Hey everyone, welcome back to Beauty School Bobby. Today we are here at the Redken Exchange in New York City and we are so excited to be partnering with L'Oreal Access and LEAD. I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you do, leave a like. Thank you so much for being here, Kenneth. I'm so excited to talk to you. So I just got your whole background, your whole life story, but you are from New Jersey. Um, you own how many salons in New Jersey at yeah, the four, moment? Four currently. Okay, that's awesome. So I want to start kind of rewind a little bit back to the beginning of this. What was your first exposure that you can remember um, of the beauty industry? Um, I've always wanted to do hair my whole life, um, but coming from a middle class background mm -hmm. and coming where college and education was really important, we weren't encouraged to do that. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know a lot of people that actually made money doing it. So mm -hmm. we had no references. Um, so I was kind of forced to go to college mm -hmm. and uh, went into the fashion industry, went into retail. And once I climbed the corporate ladder a little bit, I decided I want my own business. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I always thought it would be a clothing store. Okay. But I always wanted to do hair. Yeah. I just thought it was fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided to uh, quit my job mm -hmm. after some experiences yeah. with the corporate world. And at that point, because I did well in the corporate life, my parents supported the decision. Okay. That's awesome. So they were like, okay, you did it. You tried it. And I got... I was promoted seven times within seven years of my career. Wow. So my dad's like, I think we should give him a shot. Yeah. So, <laughs> Only took a little convincing. <laughs> Just a little bit. You would have to meet my mother. Um, <laughs> but yes, she's like, you're going to go shampoo hair. You have a company car and a salary and benefits. I'm like, yes, it'll be okay. <laughs> so what was the, where did you go to beauty school and what was beauty school like for you? So beauty school was really, um, because I went to an all private Catholic high school in okay. New Jersey okay. and I went to Catholic school my whole life. So I was always used to a certain level of education. Mm -hmm. And then I was thrown into adult education in New Jersey and it was very different. Yeah. So we had a whole mixture of people from all backgrounds, all different walks of life, mm -hmm. um, nationalities, races, everything. Mm -hmm. um, it was, so it was culturally enriching. Yeah. We, I, I've never, I was never in that mixture before. Right. So it was um, all economical levels, all that. So I went to vocational school because it was a, it was so inexpensive in New Jersey yeah. at the time. Do you remember how much you paid for beauty school? Oh my God, yes, I do. What was that it? Was the one thing my mother actually told me that was right <laughs> um, is uh, she goes, you're not going to a private school. She goes, I think you should go to vocational school. At the time, Middlesex County, where I live, um, it was only $650. Oh my gosh. That's mind blowing. It was. Wow. Okay. So you go to beauty school. Good. It's how many hours? So it, back then, if you did vocational, it was a thousand. If you did private school, it was 1200. Okay. So I had a couple of friends that people where I went to get my haircut and they said at that time, you know, they weren't really teaching anything except, well, actually in New Jersey, they're still teaching the same thing. Mm -hmm. So they teach the state board, they teach you to pass a test. Mm -hmm. And um, so you really didn't learn anything that you needed to really survive. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I did that. And then I went to a school like Vidal Sassoon afterwards for a straight month, used my money for that and went to learn how to cut hair. Okay. That's so smart. Um, and I think it's so important. I mean, I'm sure that that, that changed you. I'm sure a lot more in that one month and you learned a lot more in that one month. That's kind of more practical to what you were going to do in your career. Yeah, I was right on 17th and Broadway. Yeah. So I traded um, at that time. I went for a month and then, um, which is a, a great memory for me, is mm -hmm. I would give up two or three days a week mm -hmm. um, from home to come here and I would be an assistant for free so I could keep on getting educated. Wow. Yes. I mean, that is the kind of like drive that I really feel like a lot of a lot of students are kind of missing a little bit. I think that, and that's why it's so important to share your story and to hear how you got there. Because I think a lot of people are like, okay, I'm going to go to beauty school and then I'm going to get a job. And even if you go into salon, like look at all the extra steps that you had to take, you know, it didn't just get handed to you. And it wasn't just like, you knew that you needed more. Um, and that could have been your age. It could have been that you didn't do it right out of high school. Like it could have been that yes. you had some experience in the real world to say, you know, I need more. Or did you, do you think that it was, um, a little bit of like, you knew where you wanted to go. Um, think, and so you had that in mind. I think both. So to answer your question is that I believe that, um, I knew that I had to get out of the I had to get running, making money, mm -hmm. right? So I knew that I needed the skills before I hit the salon. Mm -hmm. So the only way that I could do that is go get a private education for hair cutting. Because mm -hmm. I figured if I could cut hair mm -hmm. um, and I could jump right in, I would make money. Yeah. So I did that. And then um, I also had somebody 
to tell me their, um, which gave me some great advice. They're like, just make sure wherever you cut hair, you want to live there or you want to be close. This is not a commuting job. Okay. You want to be part of the community because the way you network is really important. So you have to be in events. You have to be local. And um, until you get experience, then you can live wherever you want and then fly back to that mm-hmm. place. But make sure that that where you land is really where you want to be. That's really great advice. So That's I love really that. smart. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, because we can't take our books of business with us. Mm-hmm. So it's different than any other industry. Like if you're in finance and we have a book of business of stock portfolios and all that, mm-hmm. we can do that by Zoom. We can do that by anywhere. I can move to Florida. I can do that. I can't leave New Jersey and do the same level of service that I'm doing. Right. So it, 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 in that way, in that respect, it's a very different industry. Mm-hmm. And being part of the community, you keep them longer when you're in a suburb yes. versus a city, right? So we we're able to keep them for seven to 10 years yeah. as a client if you can maintain them yeah. versus where a city would be only two years mm-hmm. because the turnover is faster and it moves. Yeah, so, wow. Um, I, I, I decided where I wanted to live. I always wanted to live in a certain part of New Jersey, so mm-hmm. I moved there. Mm-hmm. And that's when I started um, working in that area. Yeah. Um, during your time in beauty school, after being in the corporate world a little bit, um, this industry is very different um, than, I mean, I guess it's pretty similar. I think your retail experience obviously helped you. I'm sure like for clientele and stuff, like they loved you and like selling the selling products and all of that stuff, which is something that's usually pretty hard for students, um, pretty nerve wracking. You were probably pretty confident in that. Like, so I think there were probably strengths you carried into it. Yeah, I think what happened is, is when I went to beauty school and I came out, I was a little bit of a purist. So that's what we would call them back then. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't believe in retail. Okay. So when you went to like, it was Jingles or Vida Sassoon, it was either their products, but they weren't pushing the product yet. Mm-hmm. They were only pushing education. So they believed, they didn't believe in the, the um, take home care yet. Okay. So when I got out of school, it wasn't even important to have retail. Okay. I mean, obviously that's changed now. Right. Yeah. So that wasn't a, a, a big part of it. Um, what was amazing to me was the level of education that wasn't available. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. they really didn't teach you anything about if I, if I had not done what I did mm-hmm. and went to beauty school, I mean, uh, went to fashion school, worked in retail and had corporate training. Mm-hmm. I, w- I don't think I would have survived the business. Yeah. I would, I would have went back. Mm-hmm. Like, I I don't think getting out of high school doing this Mm -hmm. um, is easy. Yeah. No, not at all. I think that there's a lot that you have to know to bring into it because of the missing pieces, you know? And I think that you, again, were aware enough to say like, oh, I need more than what this is giving me. And so I'm going to go do that and I'm going to go chase that. And I think that that's, I'm sure, a big reason um, why you are so so successful because you did those extra things. So I had to find a salon that would allow me to... Um, when I first got out of school, I was mm-hmm. like, all right, so nobody's letting me do anything. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, this is kind of bizarre. Yeah. Um, and owners didn't want to take a risk. They didn't want to invest in people. Mm-hmm. They didn't have money to pay people. They didn't, they didn't see the foresight. Um, because what happened was, is that before someone came along, it was mostly hairdressers would get together from other salons or they would leave for commissions. Right. right. And there wasn't a lot of homegrown. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that is been the biggest switch. And it's been amazing to watch that. And that's really why I switched over to Summit mm-hmm. and why we did that. Because I, uh, you know, how I started was giving um, bartenders and um, servers and all those people, giving them free haircut cards. Um, because what happened was is I figured out, listen, you need to make about two grand a month. Mm-hmm. So if I gave out five free haircuts, they were $20 a piece. They usually tip me. If I could get five a day, five days a week. It was two thousand dollars a month. Wow! Got it? Yeah. Yes. So uh, I just started doing that. Yeah. And um, what's crazy is I still have some of those clients I can trace back to those cards. Wow, that uh, is so fun. It is. I love that. It's amazing. It's so cool. But so that's what we were talking about before. Yeah. I there's this whole thing going on now on social media. Like you need lunch breaks. You need to do this. You need to do that. And I'm like, okay, but where's your demand on your time? Right. So can we get the demand on the time first? And then I'll tell you how to back out of it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I, I think this generation is um, teaching us a lot of wise things about our industry. Yeah. We don't need to be on our feet 12 hours a day. Yes. And six to eight is plenty. Mm-hmm. Right? Four days a week is beautiful. Mm-hmm. But having that packed and having doing that, yeah. you still got to work at it. Right. So I think there's something. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is my passion right now. And, and what's alarming to me is the middle is missing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So there's nowhere to get them out of beauty school mm-hmm. to make money into the salons. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of people focused in on the middle. Yeah. 
No, so, absolutely. Uh, I, uh, and I've thought that forever. Yeah. So going into salons and talking to salon owners, mm -hmm. the poverty mentality that most of them have, mm -hmm. um, and not to their fault, um, it's just interesting to me. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that you're so smart because you want to, you want to dive into it and you want to talk to beauty school students and you want to be involved on that level to change some things. So I want to talk about your career a little bit okay. um, as far as being a stylist, being a salon owner. So what, um, what was that path? What did that look like as far as being stylist then opening first location, second location and, okay. and so on? So I started out doing hair and I was doing great and I was booking people like, hour and a half for this and I was booking um two hours for for full full foils I needed a full hour for a haircut so those were long days to make a little bit of money and mm -hmm. I started peaking at about like fifteen hundred dollars a week that okay. I was doing and then um I joined Summit and what happened was is they gave us a little different way to work then I tried the every other like booking you know uh do a touch up then have some space then do another touch up like so I was booked and I took my first assistant on back then. It wasn't even called an associate mm -hmm. so that I had more hands to help me. Mm -hmm. Then I started, my totals started going higher, started shortening my hours. And then about 10 or 15 years ago, we, so we opened the first one and we did that. We had six stations and then we grew out of it. So what I did was I took part of the space next door um, when she, her business was failing. It was a bagel store. So when it started to fail, I asked her to take part of her rent away from her, maybe that would help her. Mm -hmm. Really what I wanted was her space. Right. So I took the space, I got an extra bathroom and an extra sink and we opened it up a little bit and we were able to add. So the first location we turned in from six stations, I think it's 12 now. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's correct. So there's 12 and that's where we grew out of that one. Mm -hmm. Like where the air conditioner went, the hot water heater, um, we ran out of hot water because it wouldn't keep up with the flow of what we were doing. Okay. Um, and thank God, you know, tankless water teachers came yes. along. Yes, yes. So we went through that whole experience. And when that happened, somebody approached me about opening a second one. Okay. And at the time, we didn't know about shifting. We didn't know about, um, you know, we're still closed on Sundays and Mondays. Uh -huh. um, so we thought we outgrew it, but really we didn't. Yeah. Uh, but the business was great. The rent was good. Uh -huh. And we were doing well and we were training. So we hit this, like, I call it the sweet spot. But uh -huh. There was like nine to 10 stylists. We started, you know, I think we're getting close to hitting. Yeah. That location hit a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And, um, by the time it hit a million two, we could take four or 500,000 out of that salon, open another location, very close, take some owners out and move it over. Okay. So Heather said, um, my business coach, Heather Bagby, yeah. um, yes. said, yeah, I think we should give it a shot. Awesome. So I did. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure if I should have. Um, <laughs> But it was good. Yeah. So what does a day look like for you on like a normal day? Or now, you, yes. So now I've totally changed. I work yeah. three, I work with three associates. Okay. Um, You're I, behind the chairs. I'm behind the chair four days a week. Okay. And I, I didn't realize that you were still doing that so yes. much. And so before businesses. COVID, mm -hmm. I was doing about 14 days a month behind my chair. Okay. And I was managing mm, five months of success. I was probably doing about 20000 to $24,000 a month. And, um, after COVID, I came back more. Wow. Um, and I started working, um, 16 to 18 days a month behind okay. my chair. Yeah. Um, just because it was, we had to jump back in mm -hmm. and we had to make some revenue up. So I was starting to change it and then COVID changed yeah. um, my direction. Yes. And so it led me back into the salon. So now I work 7.30 to 2.30, 3 o'clock, okay. 7.30 a.m. in the morning till 2.30 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked that Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Okay. And you're also managing in running I have, locations. Uh, I have an amazing manager uh -huh. who's the only um, shareholder of my companies okay. um, that is not um, a hairdresser. Okay. She doesn't have her license. Yeah. So she takes care of all the payroll. She takes care of all. She does a lot of the coaching. I would say I'm more of the visionary and she's more of the business person. How did you find her? Um, she was a client. Okay. Um, and she worked for a corporation and she started having her children. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, is that I, I asked her, I was like, do you want a receptionist job? At the mm -hmm. time we would call it a receptionist. Ten, yeah. Do you want 10 to two while your kids are at? And then as I grew the business, she grew with me. Wow. And then her corporate experience started to play into it. And as her kids got older, she took on more and more responsibility mm -hmm. and uh, we grew it. And then in each location, there's, shareholder, there's a shareholder. I love that. Yeah. So the, really in each, smart. each location has a shareholder. We took them out, moved them, put their okay. business and let it grow a little bit. Wow. So the, all the salons are only within about five miles of each other. Oh, they're close. 
Okay, yes. yeah. I didn't realize that they were so, like all that close. Well, what's really interesting, it's easier to do that yeah. than open them far away. Because yeah. you can take three or 400,000, move it. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I really realized is I really had to have a passion for this because if I would have stayed at the first location mm-hmm. and I just kept all the profit from there and grew it, I would have already been retired. Yeah. But what I did was <laughs> I decided to invest more into people and places yeah. and things like that. And yeah. I'm like, all right. And then, so, <laughs> like, because, I am. well, you know, uh, they don't give us money. Yeah. Right. So uh, we're all on the books. We're all in, we're, 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 we do everything right. Yeah. You know, I went for a loan and, you know, our, our volume of our company is now about four point five five million dollars. And I went for, um, <laughs> I went for a loan and they wanted to give me $20,000. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, based on our income. Wow. So, um, the, the this industry is just right. Yeah. It's so crazy. they just don't get it. They and don't I think, at I, all. I think I, I, I think that's like my vision mm-hmm. is that you know if you were you know if you were a guidance counselor and I was smart, you would tell me not to go to beauty school, and it happens every day for us. Yeah. And you hear it all the time. Why can't we go to beauty school and get a business degree? Right. That's what people should do. Mm-hmm. They should get an associate degree and they should get their hair license. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break from the podcast to hear a word from our sponsors. Today's sponsor for this episode is LEAD. LEAD is the first degree designed with beauty professionals in mind. To create future professionals and leaders for this fast-growing industry, Rolfs has partnered with L'Oreal, Arizona State University, and Mesa Community College and is proud to launch the first ever college and university degree designed specifically with beauty professionals. It's time to acknowledge the level of impact beauty professionals have in our lives. Every year, an individual consults with a beauty professional over 48% more than a physician. This is why advancing the accredited education of beauty professionals is our mission. LEAD is shaping the future of beauty by developing the minds and expanding the intellect of beauty professionals who maintain and restore our self-expression and well-being. For more information, visit leadinstitute.degree today. The folks at Access, L'Oreal's online destination for professional education, are ready to kick off the holidays. Because they love cosmetology students so much, they're launching a holiday promotion just for you. It's called Haul for the Holidays, and trust me, it's a haul like no other. And what's even better is that it couldn't be easier to participate. So here's how it works. Starting on November 1st, you will log into L'Oreal Access, complete the Haul for the Holidays learning plan, which has been curated just for students, so they can learn about different L'Oreal professional hair care and color brands. And then you'll hop over to L'Oreal's Level Loyalty Reward site and enter to win the Ultimate Stylist Starter Kit. 100 students will win the holiday haul containing prizes like a mannequin head, a carbon comb, tint brushes, mixing bowls, super cute capes and aprons, towels, a ton of full-size L'Oreal products, and so much more. Then 10 lucky winners will get all of that plus enough level points to redeem for a nice set of shears or a Dyson hairdryer. Typically, you have to earn points on level by buying L'Oreal products, but with Haul for the Holidays promotion, you have the chance to get them for free. How insane is that? Students will have just until before the end of November to complete it. So make sure you're signed up for both L'Oreal Access and L'Oreal Level Loyalty Rewards program. More info is on its way, but go ahead and get excited. This is about to be a happy holiday indeed. Now let's get back to the episode. I was going to ask you, so you kind of like jumped into that. Like I was oh, just literally, no, 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 it's good. Like you're on the right track. Like you're, you're already well. answering the questions okay, that like good. I want to talk to you about because I want to ask you, um, you've mentioned and hinted a little bit at the pieces that you think are missing. So um, you're a salon owner, four locations, and you're behind the chair, which means that you are working with associates, um, and you're working with, um, new students hiring, 
I'm sure if you're experiencing what everyone else is experiencing across the country, you have people leaving, coming, going, some change, some turnover. Yes. What have you identified as the um, thing that's going on that's causing this? Is there one single thing? And I'm asking you particularly because um, I know you've thought about it. And I know that this is something that you've really, like, it's not like you're like, oh, I just think whatever. I know that you've thought about this and it's something that you're trying, attempting to change, attempting to fix. What What's missing? So, I, you know, um, I think, well, I think COVID has um, really made us realize and made us look in, inward and I think that's really what happened. So okay. I believe that um, during the time of COVID, when we shut down, uh, everything could be taken away. Um, you mean specifically like? Yeah, like, so I, you know, I worked for 20 years and then one day somebody called me and I talked to my uh, employment lawyer and uh, he goes, you're going to need to lay everybody off and shut things down. That was probably one of the most horrible days of my life, but I knew I was doing the best thing for my employees because then in New Jersey, they could get to unemployment before all the other salons, yeah. before everybody in the restaurant shut down. Okay. Because we knew it was coming. I have friends that okay. are um, in local yeah. government and we didn't know that. Like, so nobody knew until that Wednesday. Yeah. I knew that Friday before. Okay. That I was going to shut it down. Yeah. And uh, so I was able to lay them off Monday. How were you? like confident enough in that moment because I think so much of like what we were experiencing was like is it gonna come like is it gonna happen oh I knew it was like, coming okay so you were confident enough to say like I need to make this decision and I need to go ahead and jump for them I did because yeah. what happened was is that it was happening the wave mm -hmm. was happening and it was happening there was no you know um you know I have friends in the city that are doctors mm -hmm. um and yeah. literally I was supposed to come in for a checkup um from my voice guy and he's like stay away Wow. He's just like, stay away. Yeah. It's not good. I'll yeah. see you later. We'll take Gosh. care of this later. And yeah. I've had a long-term relationship with him. Mm -hmm. He's been um, a very pivotal point in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that forced a lot of like, this is it. Right. Mm -hmm. So doing those Zoom calls every week while we were closed and they weren't my employees. Yeah. Um, and it makes people question. Mm -hmm. what they're doing with their lives. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really what we're experiencing now. People, um, listen, they shut us down. They took everything away from us. Mm -hmm. um, that was huge. Mm -hmm. So I think it made a lot of people think about what they want to do and how they want to spend their time. I don't think it's wrong. I think we just need to get adjusted mm -hmm. to the way the world is right now. So yeah. if you're somebody that wants to work three days a week and I want to work five, mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. But here's what I think is missing. Mm -hmm. Nobody's teaching them how to get to the three or five, mm -hmm. right? So they're telling them about all these wonderful things like, oh, make sure you take a lunch break. Well, how about you make sure that you have an appointment in the book, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. um, and I think a lot of people, um, the industries that have been affected as I'm observing are mm -hmm. the industries that were taken away. So mm -hmm. a lot of people left serving yeah. and they went into other things because mm -hmm. they shut them down, right? right? So they shut hairdressing down. So that tells somebody, like it gives them the mindset, they have control over whether I earn money or not. Right. And I think that was like a mind manipulation thing, mm -hmm. but I think it's like a trauma. Mm -hmm. And I think we're just realizing now that we're coming out of trauma. Mm -hmm. And what happens to that is you wake up and you're like, whoa, this was, this was not. And as you said, people were starting to either open their own salons, mm -hmm. go to salon suites. Mm -hmm. If they never did it before, they were taking chances, right? Yeah. Don't blame them for that. Mm -hmm. Over the last two years, I've probably been the most ineffective owner I've ever been in my life. And that was not in fear. I didn't want anybody to leave and I wasn't going to give them a reason to. So you mean ineffective meaning like? I let people do things that I would never let before. I haven't <laughs> talked to anybody about this yet that has identified like, that being a thing, I think a lot of the salon owners that I speak to are like, I don't know what's going on. I, you know, they, I have all these people leaving and we can't hire fast enough. Our, our cosmetology students can literally go anywhere. They've never been, they've yes. never had more options. They've never been in more demand, right? Because the salons need them. Yes. Um, I don't know that I have spoken to many people that have looked inward the way that you're saying you have to say, like, I've been letting you get away with Oh, everything told, uh, for the little bit. And now that I want to have rules again or structure or I'm whatever. Just, I'm just starting. So I, I survived. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. our bank accounts are where some had told us they needed to be. I followed all the government rules. I put mm -hmm. the right amount of money in the bank. I did all of that. Right. So guess what? I'm safe again. Mm -hmm. In my mind. Yeah. 
And I'm okay if one shuts down. I'm yeah. okay if you leave tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I've survived. Yeah. So um, now it's time to take back the salons. Yeah. And I'm okay doing it a different way. Mm -hmm. But now you're going to show up to the work I, the way I want you to show up to work. Yes. Okay. And I'm totally okay with it. Yes. I'm okay if I have to be alone. I still have my two hands. I still have a couple years under my belt. I can still start over. I'm not worried about it anymore. Right. So I feel like I'm coming out the other side of it. Yeah. Did I, you hire during that time? Oh, yes. And so okay. th that's another thing that yeah. nobody will talk about. We right. hired associates, right? But here's the wild thing. Mm -hmm. We hired people and taught people for two years not to touch people, not to go up to them, not to be customer service oriented, and not to interact. Mm -hmm. And when your shift is over, please leave the building. And then we take off the mask and we want them to behave different. Right. And we're wondering why they're not. Mm-hmm. Well, and like getting frustrated. Right. So it'd be like you yeah. and I landing in Japan tomorrow uh -huh. and being like, oh, here, go learn the language. Mm -hmm. It's a different world. Yeah. We wouldn't know how to get anywhere. Right. Well, I wouldn't. I don't yeah. know if you know oh, Japanese. No, 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 no. I okay. do not. But thank you for, for a moment <laughs> thinking that I might. <laughs> well, sometimes you don't want to assume that you don't, right? Oh, I know. Um, yes. But that, that is more of what it's like. Yeah. Right. So that's where I find us in this weird spot right now of I, I, I'm happy for the people that are going and moved on. And I'm really happy that they left mm -hmm. because what I've realized is that eventually it will be a good thing because mm -hmm. they didn't want to be there deep down. They made some soul searching and it's okay to clear it. Now let's grow it. So now the person that I'm looking for wants to grow people for a living, wants to do that, is, is really wants to train other people. Mm -hmm. um, so, so are I, you hiring differently now? Are you looking well, you in different know, places? We, or we, we did this thing where we were just hiring nice. Like, we're just hiring nice, right? Because we would take anybody off the street. Mm -hmm. Like, are you nice? You can come work for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, because you can never breed in that. Uh, you can never, like, take somebody and make them nice. Right, yeah. Like, if they're not nice to start with, I'm good with you. You just stay over there where I used to try to save yes. people. <laughs> I'm not saving anyone anymore. Yes. They yes. usually turn on you. Mm -hmm. um, not in a bad way, but they have other agendas. Right. So it's not about me. It's about them. Right. And I was never their right fit. Yeah. So now I want them to be kind. What do they want to do with their lives mm -hmm. do they want to sell like my biggest joys are like you know i have a single mom who has been with me as an associate she bought her own condominium um or townhouse um she drives her own car she does like all that stuff only because i opened my salon yeah right and so, so that's awesome. the cool stuff yeah that i get to watch people pay for their own weddings do all that that's yeah. where the gifts start to fly in yeah absolutely so, um but you need those people that have that feeling and mm -hmm. this um, I've never seen a group of people um, on social media mm -hmm. or um, in this age group. Mm -hmm. or, and it doesn't even need to be age group. It's just a, where they are in their businesses. Right. Yes. We call it level three mm -hmm. or whatever. But they get to this point where it's um, it's very ego-based. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes. what I mean that they don't really worry about anybody else. Mm -hmm. And it's not wrong. I think yeah. we've just went from, I don't want to be that person where... 12 hours a day anymore and my feet hurting and my back hurting, but I also don't want to be that three hour person yeah. and still expect to make $150,000 a year. Yeah. So somewhere in the world, like if you live in New Jersey, you have to make a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars combined, you yeah. know, but it would be nice if you did it on your own. If you don't do that, you really can't live there comfortably. Mm -hmm. So teaching people how to do what we love as an industry, yeah. I think is, I think there's a mess. I think we can teach more people how to do it the right way and, and not the right way. Do it how they want to live. Mm -hmm. And kind of work backwards a little bit. Like, uh, yeah. like yeah. blend the two. Yes, exactly. Blend the hard work and the hustle mm -hmm. with the knowledge we have today yeah. would be amazing. It definitely feels like where when I first came into the industry um, like 10 years ago, I think, you know, the downside was like a lot of people not supporting it or like parents not supporting it. Um, it feels a little bit like there's more of like, I don't want to say an attack and like be dramatic, but I know exactly the memes you're talking about and those kinds of things where it's like, it really feels like a, you're being negative about this industry and you're like, no, but this is what you have to do. Like what you're being negative about or the things that you're screaming are just a part of the industry if you want to be successful. And I think until, I mean, kind of just like COVID, like you said, you got through it, you survived. Um, I think as an industry, um, this you know, this thing that people are doing and leaving and going on their own and just, just jumping, like without even having the preparation to go out on their own and do that, I think is going to be something that changes. And I think that it'll be, we're just going to have to wait and see like what that ends up like looking like. For exactly. Sure. Yeah. I, I, I think you couldn't have said it more perfectly is that we're going to have to figure it out yeah. because 
going forward, um, we need to learn how to get the people in the salons to work. Yes. I mean, my big thing that I think I'm going to change is I would love to start recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, you know, in retail, we used to actually go into other stores yeah. and do that. And yeah. be like, listen, I have opportunities for yeah. people that you know. Yeah. Um, so a lot of chain salons and a lot of venture capitalists are putting money into chains because there's money in hair. Right. Problem is, is they're not really worried about the hairdresser. Right. Yeah. The hairdresser Absolutely. becomes a commodity that mm -hmm. tops out at $40,000 and they can't make more. Right. Yes, um, exactly. At a national chain. Yeah. So, no, exactly. you know, if you come work for an independent owner, I can get you all the way to 180. Yeah. And you're still working four days a week. Right. But you're giving four other people a chance to earn a living. Right. So it depends on what they. Yeah. I mean, that's the huge thing. So the yeah. chains right now really have an advantage over us because they can, they have volume uh, out of walk in. Yeah. So people think that's good busy. Right. But then they, their lifestyle gets to 40000 mm -hmm. and then they're stuck. Right. And so they're kind of trapped. Yeah. No. So if we can make them aware, I, I think there's no awareness to our industry. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't think they know. Like, nobody has ever met a me. Yeah. No, exactly. Right? That's like, why we had to put you out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have to do this. Well, when um, I tell people true. I work four days a week, can I make $180,000 a year behind yeah. my chair? Not as an owner. Yeah. Like, I'm making one hundred and eighty grand behind my chair. Yeah. That's so amazing. That's why I had to go back and do it. Yeah, exactly. Because there was no profit after COVID. Right. Yeah. You're like, you know? no, this is what we have to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is what I have to do. Yeah. And it just proved to me that I could do it. Yeah. It proved to me that I was okay. Yeah. And, and it also changed me. Yeah. I don't want to do long belly arches anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to do touch-ups. I want to do a couple foils. And I want to do great haircuts. Yeah. I do not want to do belly arches that take me four hours. Yeah. For it's sure. just not my... Right. But you get to be in control of that yes. now because you put in the work to yes. get there. Like that's why. Right. So. so, and you know, with the economy, what it's doing or mm -hmm. what we're going to see it do or what we think it might do. Um, I think it's really interesting that we're going to have to dig our heels in mm -hmm. to get the same amount of clients yeah. that, and it's going to be interesting to see how this all washes out. Yeah, for sure. We'll and do a follow-up episode together. I would <laughs> love that. You and I will just be the correspondents on this and we'll just keep updating <gasps> all the time. We, I think we can do I it. I think we should too. Yes, I think it would be great. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that that is where I, I, I think the real, what we were talking about is the miss. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the miss is that we're not giving them business tools. Mm -hmm. We're not telling what it's really like to earn a living. Mm -hmm. We don't tell them what a real day looks like in a hairdresser. Right. I mean, I've heard salons now hiring cleaning people at night because the stylists don't want to clean anymore. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, you can take Windex, mm -hmm. right? Right. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, Summit makes it really amazing that we have a lot of hands to help us. Mm -hmm. But in every industry, we have not caught up. Yeah. And you can even see it in um, the medical field, accounting. I always relate it to very respected professions. Yes. They all have assistants. They all have people who do all their work. Mm -hmm. and even designers they don't sew the dress right so yeah. we need to make hair designers but they need to know the stages of what that looks like right Absolutely. like what does it look like to be a paralegal mm -hmm. what does it look like to be a staff attorney yeah. what does it look to be in private practice yeah i don't think any of them are wrong i think yeah. you could be a studio hairdresser a salon hairdresser a corporate hairdresser mm -hmm. um and a sweet hairdresser i think you just need to know what all those avenues look and guess what Nobody's laid it out. Yeah. Maybe some, it's the first one. That yeah. They tapped into it and right. started doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but the schools are not telling them. Especially right. if we go outside of a tea spa or we go outside of professional right. school, yes. they're not doing it. No, absolutely. Especially in our vocational schools. I think it's why it's so important to ask the right questions when you're looking for beauty schools and, you know, making sure that you're talking to people that are successful in the industry and getting their opinion on that as well. So, so I have always in my whole life wanted to change the New Jersey test. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to make it like four months of haircutting, four months of color, four months of business. Four months of marketing. Mm -hmm. Like, teach them the real stuff that we're going to teach them to make money. Yeah. And I, I, I don't think we do that. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. And, that. Um, and really, it came out of needing people. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really what's happening is it, coming out of a need. It's like, where are these people? I got to get to them. Yeah. And that's where I discovered um, what was at the BD schools. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to follow this journey and I'm excited to see kind of what you learn. And I have so much I want to talk to you about as soon as we shut these cameras off. Um, <laughs> I have so much I want to talk to you that we can't say on, on camera, but I, I'm, okay. we're on the same, we're on the same path and we are definitely hoping for the same things and for the same change. So okay. where can we follow you? Um, uh, Hair by Kenneth on Instagram. Okay. Um, my page is not really that updated, okay. um, but we are working on that. <laughs> awesome. Um, but it will look better. Yes. And uh, so you can follow me there. Okay. That would be great. 
in your salons? Where can you call They are salons? Evolution in New Jersey. Okay. Um, there's one in Monmouth County. Uh, oh, they're all in Monmouth County. Okay. And there's four locations. Okay. Great. That's and they're nice. all on my Instagram, it says it. Oh, perfect. Awesome. So we can yes. follow you there. So if awesome. you can follow me there, that would be wonderful. Yes. Well, we will go do that. And thank you so much for being here. And thank you oh for God, what you're doing to really, you know, help elevate the industry. Because I think it's important for salon owners to be involved in those conversations. So thankful for you and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay. Thank you all so much for watching today and thank you to L'Oreal Access and Lead. We are so excited for this partnership and hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, share it with somebody that you think might like it too. Make sure you follow us at Beauty and Style Network on Instagram and make sure you follow me at Beauty School Bobby on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, ring that bell so that you get notified when the episodes are coming out. Leave a comment down below and we can't wait to see you next time. Bye guys.